Boss fights are as much of a gaming staple as terrible escort missions and eating food off the ground, but very rarely does anyone manage to get them right. With that in mind, here are our five least favorite boss encounters and five of the best to show them how it should have been done. There are spoilers coming up, so tread carefully. Let's do the room something to talk about! Ha! Two freaks in a fight to the death! <laughs> There's a reason the Joker is Batman's archenemy. He and the Dark Knight are two sides of the same coin, anarchy and chaos versus discipline and order. The Joker isn't a physically imposing figure, but the psychological threat he poses to Batman is incalculable. That's why it's such a shame the final boss fight of Batman Arkham Asylum has the Joker morph into a massive Titan-enhanced Hulk and chase bats around a big circular arena. <sighs> This fight checks all the boxes for annoying boss fights, including waves of lesser enemies, periodic invulnerability, and a repeated button-mashing QTE that even Daily Thompson's decathlon veterans will have trouble with. <laughs> Thankfully, Rocksteady went on to show that they do know how to make a boss fight that's memorable for the right reasons in Batman Arkham City. The game's showdown against icy villain Mr. Freeze is great, thanks to the way Freeze pays attention to what you're doing throughout the fight. There are many ways to harm Freeze, but no way will work twice as he adapts to your tactics. It forces you to seek out new attack angles and techniques and makes sense for both characters, one of our favorites. I learn from my mistakes, Batman. You. Well, looky here. We got us a Boy Scout. The boss fights in Deus Ex Human Revolution didn't suit the game at all and thrust you into situations you were hopelessly ill-equipped to handle due to having put all your upgrade points into hacking, cloaking, and voice graveliness. I never asked for this. Too bad. Worse amongst them was the game's first boss, Barrett, a giant cyborg maniac with guns for arms and three million grenades. Don't think my social augmentations are going to get me through this one. Really, the game should have allowed you to stealth defeat the bosses by turning their own weapons against themselves. For a good example of this kind of boss fight, we look to the final battle against Wheatley from Portal 2. Four-part plan is this. One, no portal service. Two, start the neurotoxin immediately. Three, bomb proof shields for me. Needing directly onto number four, bomb I'm throwing it. You know what? This plan is so good, I'm going to give you a sporting chance and turn off the neurotoxin. I'm joking, of course. Good fun. This multi-stage boss battle requires you to use all the skills you've acquired in the game so far, is full of genuinely witty dialogue, and contains the ballsiest trick shot in gaming history. God bless you, Val. You're insane, it's massive! You're a Jedi, boy. Size means nothing to you. Reach out with the Force and grab that ship! Part of the reason the Imperial Star Destroyer boss fight from Star Wars The Force Unleashed is so frustrating is that it should be one of the high points of the game. You're a lone Jedi, pulling a giant spaceship from the sky using nothing but your mastery of the Force. It should be the coolest thing ever. Of course, the other part of the reason it's so frustrating is that it's a horrible broken mess. The prompts on screen bear only the vaguest relation to what you're actually supposed to be doing, and you're constantly having to break off to deal with waves of TIE Fighters during which the Star Destroyer will merrily reset itself to its original position so you can start all over again. If it's a good David vs Goliath boss battle you're after, try the Colossus of Rhodes boss fight from the beginning of God of War 2. Here Kratos fights a giant bronze statue through the streets of the city before blasting a hole in it and fighting it from the inside. Epic, fun, and with success actually achievable by people with the usual complement of hands. Jar Jar Binks has now officially been replaced as the worst thing in the Star Wars universe. You won't listen to me! Perhaps you will listen to your mother! The Siren from Bioshock Infinite is, oh hang on I've got this, don't help me, uh, it was the reanimated ghost of Lady Comstock who, oh wait hang on no no no, it was the corporeal form of Elizabeth's feelings about her mother which had, no hang on hang on, uh, was she a different dimensions version? I'll forget it. Elizabeth, why is your mother a ghost? Whatever she was, she was annoying as hell, being able to resurrect dead enemies, teleport, cause you massive damage with a high-pitched scream, and heal herself. And you had to fight her three times, because once apparently wasn't enough to experience the true fun of running around in a blind panic trying to shoot an endlessly vanishing ghost monster. There's no need for words, Snake. I'm Psycho Mertis. 
For a true psychological boss battle, you want the famous Psycho Mantis fight from Metal Gear Solid. Psycho Mantis might look like he's just come from Saturday Night at Torture Garden, but he's actually a gifted psychic who doesn't so much break the fourth wall as kick it to pieces by sifting through your memory card, messing with your TV, and vibrating your controller with the power of his mind. The game has the courage in its convictions to follow through with the idea as well. To beat him, you need to plug your controller into the second controller port, because that represents… Uh, okay, I'm not sure, but it's a super cool idea and one of the most memorable boss encounters ever as a result. I wasn't able to read the future. A strong man doesn't need to read the future. He makes his own. Oh, well, looky here, if it ain't little Chucky Queen. Didn't get enough of me yet? Come back for my autograph? Oh god, this asshole. Leon Bell is one of Chuck Green's fellow contestants from the Terror is Reality game show, turned crazy and determined to kill his former hero for going soft. Once this boss has been triggered, he'll razz around Fortune Plaza, running you over with his chainsaw motorbike until you either find a cheaty exploit to trap him in a fence, or wait for the mission to expire. You know, fun either way. <laughs> Much better is the boss fight with Ancient Sniper The End from Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. On its own, it's a great tactical boss fight, but the game also gives you two different ways to avoid the fight altogether. You can either snipe the end after your first meeting, bypassing the later boss encounter altogether, or you can save your game during the fight and come back a week later to find that the end has died of old age. If only that worked for all bosses. Nature, I found the end. He's dead. What the hell happened? Maybe it was from old age. You mean he kicked the bucket in the middle of a battle? Maybe. Well, Snake, the victory is yours. So those are our five least favourite boss encounters and the five we wish they were more like. What are some of your favourite and least favourite video game bosses? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more from Outside Xbox. Now as a special treat, let's all enjoy the painful death of Leon Bell. Never forget, I'm number one! <laughs> yeah, you're on fire. Tremendous. Thank <laughs> you.